Hey, beautiful humans, I'm Ryder CX, and um, this is a stranger. I don't know who the f he is. Hi, uh, <laughs> I'm Zach Pack, hello. Zach Pack and I um, met up at a convention that you might know as PAX East. And so we thought it'd be a really cool opportunity since we've done so much stuff like on the internet to actually um, do something in person. Yeah, this, uh, you mentioned the other day this is our first in-person collab besides the, the panel we did last year, so pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. And like the panel was a hot mess, but this will be a hot mess too, so yeah. it's totally fine. I thought it would be a really cool idea since we're both sort of licensed game connoisseurs. We're going to talk about um, games that we would love to see get remade, licensed games in particular. And this is something that I think is really timely in particular because we're both very interested in a little remake called um, Epic Mickey Rebrushed. Sad they're not here at freaking PAX East. I've actually been playing a little bit of Epic Mickey, so I'm looking forward to um, whenever you start getting into it. Seems pretty kooky and fun, so I'm excited. I'm really like curious about the morality system in it. Mickey Mouse and morality is something I'm like very interested in. So I can see why the game has like a huge audience. Yeah, it seems like they really went in depth with like just a bunch of the elements of the story. Zach and I each picked out three licensed games that we'd love to see get remade, you know, in a modern sense. And I feel like remakes and remasters are just so much more common than they used to be. Like I feel like every other game Game that comes out now is like a remake. Any of these could totally see the treatment. Maybe some more than others, but um, yeah. we'll get into that. Yeah, I don't think any of mine are gonna get the remake too. Well, actually, you never know. I think one of them has a good chance. One of them is possible, I think, yeah. <laughs> the other two, <laughs> Yeah. I think that's something that like um, everyone can definitely agree here is um, there should be a SpongeBob game in this list. Should so be indeed. I thought I would take the honor of um, including a SpongeBob game. <laughs> I actually think that like out of all the SpongeBob games out there, this is definitely one I would probably want to see a remake of the most, and that is the SpongeBob movie game. I have said like some uh, not like great things about this game here and there. I had to defend this game at our panel last year. <laughs> I had to defend it. <laughs> Did Dave hate it? Or yeah. Was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't really particularly hate it, but I do think it's a game that like could use some improvements here and there. You know, I just think that like it is sort of a lesser version of Valve Bikini Bottom in a lot of ways. But at the same time, it does a lot of things that I actually think are better than Valve Bikini Bottom. For instance, the difficulty curve. There's actually a lot more challenging stuff in the movie game compared to Valve Bikini Bottom. So I think it's a nice natural progression from the original game. And of course, like it's based off the SpongeBob movie, which is the greatest movie of all time. That movie turns 20 years old this year, right? Or is that last year? I don't know. But I know it's like, it's gotta be 2004. Yeah, it came out 2004. Maybe. Makes sense, because that's when the movie, yeah, it has to be 20 years now. It has to be 20 years this well, year. Maybe 2005 or 2006. Or maybe 2000, no, not, definitely not 2006, but probably 2004 or five at the latest. So like, if his 20th anniversary is coming up, then I'm like, what better way to celebrate it than a remake of the video game? And you know, because the thing is, is like you mentioned, the game does have its faults, like it's not perfect, but that's where a remake could come in. It could polish up, you know, the loose ends that need to be tightened or just things that weren't great about the original. Original, fix that stuff up for the remake and make it even better. Why not? I'm trying to think what I'd actually like to see in the remake because like now we can kind of have an idea of what it would look like because Purple Lamp Studios did like rehydrate it so it definitely would adopt a very similar art style. I would love them to just like give us more pre-render cutscenes. Yeah, know? change up the cutscenes. Yeah, just like um, it'd be really cool to see them actually get like more like cutscenes of like the film stuff and put it into the game, make it more of a full fledged game. I don't necessarily think it needs like a hub world per se, especially because it doesn't really make much sense for it. But I would like maybe some kind of like area you can go to to just kind of like discover secrets and stuff. Maybe like a place like portals. I don't know. Just like a little thing to kind of tie the venture to get a little bit more. And also um, get rid of all the extra tokens of like the sliding and the <laughs> well, dragon levels. I wouldn't say um, get rid of them. I would say, honestly, just ditch the mechanic of needing a certain amount of Goofy Goofy or make the requirement less okay, and make the extra actually, make the extra completion, give that something more worthwhile, okay. unlock something. That like makes a lot more sense. Like do something like that. Like it's pretty crazy that like you're at the second to last level and then you need a certain amount of Goofy Goofy tokens to reuse the paddy wagon. Yeah. <laughs> like I understand the requirement of needing a certain amount of game because Battle for Bikini Bottom does the same thing, but Battle for Bikini Bottom is a lot less strict and it's yeah. like, like you can get like all the gold spatulas in jellyfish fields and like basically skip down top of the bottom. Playing Topolis took me so long as a kid to get through, like super long. When I finally got through it, I was so excited only to be met with like, you don't have enough Goofy Goober tokens to use a paddy wagon, SpongeBob. It's like, you, Mindy. Yeah, Mindy's not good in this. She, she, yeah. She's like, like, oh, I need something. I need more from you to help you <laughs> out. It's my father's life on the line, but eh, I can't help you out unless you get me some stuff. What's your first one? It's, I, I feel like a lot of people are going to disagree with me on the, the game in this franchise that I've chosen. Everyone knows Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. That's a very popular one for a lot of people, and everyone is calling for that one to be remade. 
but that's not the one I want. I the one I want. Cyber remade. Chase. No, Mystery <laughs> Mayhem. That one's I think the underrated one. Okay. Night of a Hundred Frights gets all the praise, and it's a good game. You know, it has a great soundtrack. It's a great game. But I feel like Mystery Mayhem, in my opinion. I mean, this is also coming from the Luigi's Mansion guy. Mystery Mayhem has mechanics like Luigi's Mansion, where you're capturing ghosts, you're unlocking rooms. But I love the fact that Mystery Mayhem. It really feels like you're watching a season of Scooby Doo because it's divided into episodes, That's and right. each episode is in a different location, but it all ties together in an overarching story. And even though it's not like the craziest story in the world it's still a really fun little time and it's just a really fun game in my opinion it, it can get hard too with like the minecart segment in the old wild west and then uh, the freaking motorbike segment in the bayou which fun fact the the farmer guy who's driving the the, the scooter is voiced by uh spongebob wait what Tom Kenny voices the little cow or not cowboy the little redneck he really just gets around he does he? get around <laughs> he really um, does get around but yeah, for those of you who don't know, for maybe some people haven't played it, it's a 3D platformery, puzzly kind of game where you play as Shaggy and Scooby Doo, uh, you swap between them. It's a very solid platformer. I uh, highly recommend it. I would love to see it get remade. I mean, Scooby Doo, they've made some missteps in recent years, but I feel like a good way to get back and giving Scooby Doo a good name again, just remake some of those older games. You've seen those tweets saying, like, oh, Velma and Knuckles show comes out like almost on the same day. Which one are you gonna watch? And <laughs> like, some responses are absolutely insane. I love it. Yeah, ugh. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just hoping for that one. I don't think I played that one specifically, but when you mentioned the uh, Luigi's Mansion mechanics, that makes um, too much sense. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, I played that game before I played Luigi's Mansion. Wow. So it's. So that's it, kind of like an appetizer for you. It, yeah, it, it got me into Luigi's Mansion. It's actually one of the first games I ever played, along with Battle for Bikini Bottom. I mean, I just need a laugh track, and I'm okay. And it has a laugh track. Okay. It does. It does. It's so it's so <laughs> intrusive, but it kind of works. It's cheesy. But In every Scooby-Doo game, if you don't have a laugh track, then you fail. Yeah, even, like, if you get hurt, sometimes Shaggy will say something, like, when he gets hit, and then there'll be the laugh track, like, laughing at his pain. It, it's great. <laughs> I think I played the other two. So I played, like, Knights of 100 Frights and whatever the other one was. Unmasked. Unmasked, yeah, I played those. I think I was about to get to that one, and then I stopped for some reason. You should totally play it. I think I'm just repelled by Luigi's Mansion in general. Well, hey, well you've played some of it now, so... <laughs> The next game that I have is, I think, a pretty, like, we would be eviscerated if we didn't, like, mention this one. <laughs> this is definitely, like, right next to Battle for Bikini Bottom. This one has so many calls for a remake, and we've actually gotten, like, support from, like, developers themselves. Like, they've actually said in interviews that they would love to revisit this game, but unfortunately, it's out of their hands. And if you know what company owns the franchise, then it's easy to know why. But Simpsons Hit and Run. What an iconic game in our childhood. I remember personally, like my uncle that I didn't know before, like, so this is the first year I met him when I was a kid. He bought me two games. One of them was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that one could, um, well, it definitely could use a remake, let's be real. I mean, with Wonka <laughs> coming out, yeah, like, yeah, it's relevant. But, yeah. but um, I, I think I would rather leave that in the past personally. But the second one was, of course, Simpsons Hit and Run. And, I mean, what can I say? It's an iconic game. It's a game that I played before the GTA series personally. So that was like kind of my introduction to the, the GTA type of game. I also hadn't really watched The Simpsons that much before I played the game actually. And it was amazing. It was also extremely frustrating. So I remember like getting to like the last level and literally wanting to like eat my controller. Eat my shorts. It was really like frustrating, but like in all the best ways possible. Like it really was testing your skills by the end of the game, like extremely well. And of course, there's just nothing more fun than just driving through Springfield as Homer, Lisa, Bart, or Marge, and just um, running over everyone, crashing into buildings, doing stupid missions, and just like enjoying all the different references to all the different characters in the show, like um, Ralph, cracked me up every time he came on screen, for instance. Wiggum is the worst police officer in the world, and I love to see that expressed in the game. The game was actually written by like the writers on the show, and you can tell, and that's actually kind of like rare, like a licensed game. Like to have the actual writers from the show come in and actually write the script is not as common as you would like, unfortunately. Perfect game. Simpsons is still really popular. What are we doing, EA? I mean, is it technically like a Disney property now? Like with Disney? It is. It is? So, 
Yeah. I don't know if that changes, like, if EA has the rights to the... They might still have the rights to the games currently, but, of course, Disney could renegotiate that. Yeah. You know, like, we saw, well, Disney greenlit the Epic Mickey remake. True, so, true. So, you know, maybe it's not as um, far-fetched as it seems. I mean, who knows if there's been any discussions, like, behind the scenes. I don't know of any personally. But I think it's a crime that the game seemingly has not even been considered for a remake, especially given the success of, like... Crash, Spiral, Spongebob yeah. in particular. It is crazy because, like, you know, as a kid, like, that was the kid. Like, both Simpsons games on that generation, that, you know, Hit and Run and Road Rage, were, like, those were, like, the childhood equivalents of, like, G- I mean, Road Rage is obviously more similar to Crazy Taxi, but they were, like, our childhood equivalents of GTA. Because, obviously, as kids, you're not going to play GTA. Well, <laughs> some kids do. But, like, yeah, for us, it's like, oh, that yeah, that's our fix of causing mayhem and crime. What would it be called? Simpsons Hit and Run Re... <laughs> <laughs> re re revved no we <clears throat> we lawsuits <laughs> i'm not the person here developing the game or making yeah. money off of it yeah so. we're not getting paid so yeah. sorry you guys have to come up with the title on your yeah. own ea whoever yeah. so two things to do one uh retire tapped out from the app store <laughs> and then two give us simpsons hit on the remake all right my next one's a deep cut so bear with me oh, <laughs> y'all have to bear with me so this is a game that i played a bit when i was a kid And to say it's aged well would be a complete lie. It hasn't. It was a PS1 title. So naturally, most PS1 titles age like butter. Yes. Or milk. Or cheese. And uh, that game is Aladdin in Nasira's Revenge. This one is a real deep cut. I know probably no one knows what it is, so I'm going to describe it. Basically, it's a 3D platformer where you're playing as Aladdin, and I believe it's been a while. The story is that Jafar has a sister, and she's trying, I believe she's trying to revive Jafar. I'm trying to remember if it takes place after, like, the first movie or, like, that uh, at-home video second sequel. You, you, you cannot ask me any of these questions. Have you not seen Aladdin? Maybe when I was, like, four. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, so you're playing as Aladdin, and basically you're trying to stop Nazira from enacting her revenge. Um, and it's really cool. It's, it's, like, it's got, like, a lot of sword fighter elements, so it's a lot of hack and slash, a lot of platforming. It's one of those games, because it's out on PS1, it just hasn't aged all that well and i feel like like aladdin just like with the setting there's so much you can do with it visually i would love to see that game like this one's mostly for the visuals and like control enhancements just bringing it back and especially with aladdin getting a movie a few years like live action movie a few years ago and i yeah. think there's a sequel in the talks i mean i think the movie did really well so i would totally not be surprised if a sequel was in the works i mean it's disney it, yeah it is disney So, I mean, you know, re-releasing that game or remaking that game from the ground up, I mean, you know, it wouldn't be, like, the biggest release ever, but it is a Disney game. It's Aladdin, which is probably one of their more popular movies, and I think it would be a good one to bring back. Plus, the soundtrack is a pretty freaking good bop, so, like, a remastered version of that soundtrack, oh, that would be Was that part of, like, the collection of games that Disney, like, re-released on the Switch? Because I know one of them was, like, Lion King. No, the the ones they re-released on the Switch were the Super Nintendo Genesis and Game Boy games of the actual movies. Like, the the actual movie games. So, like, Aladdin for the Super Nintendo also, Genesis. Aladdin was on it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The well, just Aladdin. not this one. Just not this one. Because this one's, yeah, it's, it's meant to be its own sequel story. Kind of like, um, I don't know if you ever played The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. I have, actually. It's like that, I where have. it's like a sequel story that doesn't actually happen. Yeah. But, like, it's just, yeah. I hated it, but I, loved, but I played it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't hate it. it it's was, just, you um, know, it's, it's not as good as the actual original. Frozo was game. great. Frozen was Frozo. great. Yeah. That's when we could play sometimes, because it's two players. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we could play it. Yeah, let us know down below. <laughs> no, please, please don't let us. Um, <laughs> what was my thirst game? Oh my god. <laughs> um, oh, I remember now. And like, mine's kind of like a deep cut too, I think. The third game that I would love to see get remade is actually a little ditty called Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. So this is a game that's also for the PS1. Have you ever played this one? No, this one I have not no. played. No, so it's basically like a 3D platformer and stuff. And basically the whole outline of the, the game is that um, Bugs Bunny is trying to go on vacation to Albuquerque. He um, inadvertently stumbles upon a warehouse with a time machine in it. And so he um, goes on a time machine and he basically just ruins the space-time continuum. Oh. <laughs> he has to go to all these different like eras of the past and collect these like time clocks he's going to use to basically just repair everything. And so he goes to like, the prehistoric era and then he encounters like a prehistoric Elmer Fudd, for instance, over there. And then he goes to like um, some time when like they're probably sailing along the seas and taking over like 
Americas and stuff, for instance, and he runs into Yosemite Stan over there, who's like a pirate in that scene. So it might kind of be similar to like a Scooby-Doo game that you're talking about. Like there's these different levels that kind of represent like different episodes or different tropes of the Looney Tunes show. I mean, Bugs Bunny is a legend and icon in and of himself. Classic. And I think like, there's been quite a few Looney Tunes games, but this is a game that like I loved so much as a kid. And even when I was playing it now, you know, just because I was feeling nostalgic, I was like, this still holds up pretty well. Like it's not like an amazing out of this world, like 3D platformer, but it's a game that um, has a lot of like love and respect for like the original source material. And I just think that like, I want to see it. It actually technically was my very first video game. Oh, actually, yeah. So that's probably why it's on the list, to be honest. <laughs> was, that's fair. It was my very first video game, and you know the fact that my first video game was a licensed game, I think, says a lot as to where I'm now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how I am with Battle for Bikini Bottom, because that was my yeah. first game, so. My first video games on the PlayStation 1 were this game and Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase. Ooh. And Tom and Jerry House Trap. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm just making this whole revelation in my head right now. Well, I guess I'll go on to my last game and the last game for the video. This one is not a deep cut. This one is pretty well known. Um, and it's weird because like usually, well, no, actually, no, I'm about the right age that kind of grew up with this. A lot of people might know this figure collecting game called Disney Infinity. Now, here's the thing. I feel like Disney Infinity could work well. It just didn't reach its full potential. And I feel like if they had really put more time into it rather than doing multiple releases over the, the span of a few years, just working on one version of the game and building upon it and making more like just more stuff to do making it more polished i mean the game was great as it is but a lot of the limitations of like the capacities of the toy boxes the story modes were great like those were fun yeah. and you know having each figure like the incredibles and pirates of the caribbean and monsters inc having those yeah. was great and like maybe doing more of those would even would, would not go amiss but with the toy box now that it's been about 10 years gaming has come a lot farther in that time game consoles are a lot more powerful than the 360 days and the ps3 days having a new version of the toy box that could do a lot more i think would be great especially you know a lot of people still probably have their disney infinity figures from when they grew up yeah you know and you want to re-release them and try it again now fun fact this game was originally developed by heavy iron studios who did battle for bikini bottom eggs huh i'm just saying they're kings oh uh, yeah they are they are pretty <laughs> kingly um but i feel like if they got another shot at this one i feel like it could do well especially with how much new has come out from disney these past few years yeah. they have new figures that they can market um i did hear i saw rumors that they actually were planning to remaster or remake this one because like there were like files and there were like models already done yeah. and like elsa's model was a little bit different like and things like the different characters look different I feel like if they went forward with that, I think uh, it wouldn't be as big of a success as the Toys to Life thing was about 10 years ago. But like people who already have the figures, if you sell the game separately and obviously a new portal for like 80 bucks, maybe that could do well. Yeah, I would love to spend 80 bucks on a portal, Zach. Thank you. Well, a portal plus the game. <laughs> Well, um, I will say I am personally not a fan of the Toys for Life genre, but I will say that Disney Infinity is, like, by concept, like, such a cool idea. Like, I love the idea of being able to, like, play this game with, like, all these different Disney characters and just having them all come together. Like, we need more stuff like that. And I think that Epic Mickey Rebrush, I feel like, was less likely to get remaked than Disney Infinity, in my, in my personal opinion. I feel like Disney Infinity, if they don't remake it, they're definitely going to revisit that concept one way or another. Because, like, Disney is such a vast universe now and now disney is like gobbling up all these different properties like candy and so you know you could see like <laughs> you could see star wars people in there or yeah. well star wars <laughs> was in disney infinity actually okay. and marvel oh my god so oh, and where's he, the simpsons that's what i was about to say I was like, they could do the guy. simpsons next <laughs> They could do, like, there's so much they could do. Yeah, so, like, it definitely is just something that, like, I think is going to happen one way or another. And, you know, the remake and remaster trend has definitely been, like, at an all-time high in, like, the past few years or so. I mean, I think you and I have seen, like, the great benefits of that content creation-wise. Yeah. And I think it just seems to be just keep on going, honestly. Yeah, we, we have a certain bandicoot and a certain dragon to thank for the resurgence of three, yeah. of, of, of remakes. And... and not to discount them, but I feel like if they, if they weren't there, 
there. Like, I feel like we still would have gotten to this eventually. True, because... but not, not to the extent, I don't feel like. I yeah. don't think it would be as big. I think they set, like, a good standard, though. Yeah. You know, like, you're not just going to, like, port these games over with nothing changed and things like that. You're going to fully remake their modern graphics as if they were, like, brand new games. And now, yeah, we saw a ton of games afterwards that come out in that similar vein. Yeah. I mean, Rehydrated, you could see the inspiration from Spyro and its colors and, and yeah. just how it looks. For sure. And, like, there's countless remakes afterwards and so i don't know it's definitely a big thing in gaming right now and we're definitely going to see lots more of it as the time goes on and so like i said simpsons hit and run remake where are you where are you it has been way too long it needs to be in my hands at this point you need to come up before gta 6 at least that's probably not going to come until like 2030 so and that's being generous <laughs> but do you have any like honorable mentions or anything that almost made you list um I actually did delete one. Oh, it was uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. That one was, I mean, that was on my list, but I figured since you already had a SpongeBob game, I figured it'd be redundant to have another one, but yeah. Lights Camera Pants. SpongeBob is now redundant. Yeah, I okay. mean, I just wanted to add some unique, <laughs> fun, and just different picks. But yeah, Lights Camera Pants, it's such a fun party game. And again, yeah. like, like the visuals aren't the best, like, it has its, you know, flush, but like, modernize it and redo it, like, like, yeah. And a party game for SpongeBob, like, that'll, that'll sell. I was originally going to think about putting, um, what was it? Oh, the Batman game, Batman Arkham Asylum. I think that game especially had definitely created a bit of a shift in the re in the licensed game market. It's suddenly like you could see licensed games being these like triple A titles. And so now after Batman Arkham Asylum, you also see have um, Arkham Knight. Um, then you also have um, the Spider-Man games, for instance. Suicide Squad, I know that's got mixed reception, but that looks like very high budget, at least Hogwarts Legacy. Like I feel like Batman Arkham Asylum was like the root point of a lot of, of all those games. And so I feel like I don't know if it really needs a remake, but I feel like it deserves one, if that makes sense. I also thought it'd be funny if they try to remake a completely terrible game. So I would love to see, you know, Superman is getting a little more popular. Superman 64, <laughs> flying so, through rings the whole time. It would have to be a reimagining, like a complete well, reimagining yeah. <laughs> of it. Yeah. <laughs> but think about it though, if they actually like marketed it as a remake, like I think it would get a lot of eyeballs yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just just an idea. I don't want a game just like it, but I mean, if they wanted to like make a Superman game like just really hit, then that would be um, a way to go. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Um, Y'all know Zach Pack at this point. He's been on his channel. You better know, man. I've done reliefs and <laughs> rehydrated content collabs and all sorts of jazz with writers. And, yeah, so, and a podcast, even. <laughs> yeah, so check out his channel. Subscribe. Zach Pack, dash me. You can like or dislike, doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah. All engagement is engagement. Yeah, I mean, you know, I get your views, so, you know. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below what kind of licensed games you'd love to see get remade, and, uh, yeah, we'll just kind of um, keep on going, see what comes in the future. But, uh, it's Riders, right now. Do we do the same out? <laughs> really? We did the same thing. I think this is a very common thing to do. I, mean, I didn't even realize it, because I do that in my video. What can I do to, like, distinguish myself? Maybe I'll do, like, right and out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh.